Show choir is a lot of things to a lot of people. For us here in Finley, it's, it's classic music, classic dancing. My name is Kevin Manley and I'm the director for Finley First Edition. Show choir to me is, is the love of performing and taking 52 singer dancers and 20 instrumentalists and 10 crew members together on a journey through the year with our competition show and to see that progression from the very first time we run a song to the last time we run the song at Cabaret and where that all takes us and the memories that are created during all of that time. Um, it's wonderful to be able to take our music and put it out on the competition stage against some of the finest groups in the country. I took over the group in uh, the 2005-2006 school year and uh, you know we were I was following JD Smith. JD Smith uh, is just I, I'm it seems like overkill to say it but he's just an absolute legend. He had a vision when he came here to Finley High School to start a group like this and to take it from scratch and to build it to what he did and what we all try to continue now is just truly incredible. When I was hired, uh, the administration said that they would like to see some form of a small ensemble. It didn't have to be happen immediately, uh, but they would like to see something. And of course, in the back of my mind, it was, yeah, it's gonna happen right, right away. And so we had auditions that first fall. And I believe the first year we had, it was either 24 or 26 members that were singers. And uh, we had a combo of piano, drums, and sometimes bass. We saw through competitions that uh, groups were getting larger and to compete 
against them, why we had to get larger also. It was about the second or third year uh, I got the group together. I said, so what, what direction do you want to take as far as competitions? I said, you know, if, and their only request was if we do competitions, they want to go to competitions that are meaningful. They weren't, they weren't into winning as much as they wanted to do a good job against a good competition. And by doing that, they in turn got better and became competitive. And we reached a point with that ensemble, I felt we needed help with our movement, our choreography. So I uh, called a professional choreographer that I met at a workshop. And she said, I really don't have time, but she gave me three names, and one of those names was Andy Haynes. My method would be called madness to most people in reality. I don't have one. I don't prepare. I hear a song and I start choreographing it. To me, choreography is a canvas and I just start painting. Describe Andy Haynes in a nutshell. Um, I'm not sure I can do that. He's funny, he's creative. First edition would be nowhere without Andy Haynes. I, just, I can't imagine what we would be and I can't imagine the transition that's gonna happen several years from now when we finally have another choreographer. I started choreographing to pay for college. My old high school asked me back to choreograph. In reality, I started choreographing when my girlfriend and I went in our disco contests in the 70s. But college is where I kind of, it took off at Ohio State. I made the Scarlet Gray show, I was a choreographer there. Ohio State hired me to choreograph for Scarlet Gray and I've never looked back. I've choreographed for 37 years starting year 38. So I found an avenue of creativity through like dancing around the living room or dancing with the Lawrence Welk show when it was on TV and trying to emulate what was happening because movement seemed to put me in my happy place. We had a, a very small black and white television that sat in my parents' room and on Friday nights I'd go and there was always a musical on opposite of a horror film and my family would all watch the horror film downstairs on the big box TV and I would sit in the bedroom and watch a musical. I can say FFE is like my child to me. It's my oldest job. It's, I started with the group and it has um, an incredibly special place. Every year I've worked there has been a, 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 an awesome trip for me. We were very fortunate. We got in on the ground floor pretty much with Andy Haynes uh, and that through his expertise, um, he helped first edition develop to the group that it is today.
We all, you know, I get asked the question a lot about Gavin. Did we know he was that good in high school? And I don't think that any of us can really say, you know, yeah, we knew he was going to Broadway. You know, you really can't say that, but we knew he was a special person and a special talent. Everything he did was theatrical. Uh, he did it with a flair that you see only coming from professionals. When I found out he was going on into musical theater at uh, University of Michigan, I felt we might be seeing him someday, and we are. Right now, I am lucky enough to be an actor in New York City. I work on Broadway in musicals, and I've been in, I'm actually right now in Hello Dolly on Broadway, and this is my sixth Broadway show. And I can honestly say that it's the Finley first edition that started the seed of me loving performing. School sports were cool. And over there on the other side of school were the theater music weirdos. But I had a family of people who all accepted me for who I was. When I graduated high school, I was able to take a little bit of confidence that I had and make a decision to major in musical theater and go to college. And then when I got to college, my mind was blown because there's different races and different religions and different orientations and different gender identities and just kind of going, oh wow, the world is so much bigger than I thought. But I got a glimpse of it with Finley First Edition because I saw kindness and support and love from everybody there and we lifted each other up no matter what religion or what color or what orientation or gender identity you were. You know, for me, I think the thing I'm proudest that FFE gave me was uh, to embrace my inner weirdo, to be um, an extrovert in something that a lot of people can see as really cheesy, to sort of love who you are and love what you love, um, and get on stage and show those teeth and be full out. It's like for a second you're in this chiffon, like, right, chiffon-coated, sequin-sparkled band playing and lights going and smiling and being unabashedly cheesy, fantastic, whatever you want to call it. For that moment, everything's okay in the world and everyone in the audience is feeling uplifted and possible. If we can do, if FFE can play every city and every town and all across the world, I think the world would be a better place. <laughs>
I saw a study done, oh, it's been back in the early 90s, it was done at the University of California that where they gave elementary students piano lessons. They had a control group, they gave piano lessons, they had some others did not. All of the students that received piano lessons in the, at the elementary level, when they got into middle school and high school level, their math scores were all higher. Because at that young age, studying, they, they just happen to choose piano, but studying anything in the arts triggers brain waves that will connect at a later time when you're trying to do cognitive things like math. The arts are important for the development of the whole person. There's a line in a movie um, Mr. Holland's opus where he says at the end of the movie when they're eliminating the music programs about you know we, we need students to be able to write and do math and talk about science but sooner if you cut the art sooner or later they're not going to have anything to write about. Really it's one of the reasons I became a teacher was was to help students and you know that's that's when I'm really truly happy when I feel like like what I'm doing matters to a lot of people. Um, you know, I, I think about that a lot. But that, that's what happiness is to me. And I, I hope the kids in the group see that. I hope they develop that the rest of their life. And I hope they realize that they do bring a lot of happiness to the crowd that enjoys their performance. I think art and artists are the people who sustain civilization ultimately, because wars will come and go, people will fight and win or lose, governments will rise and governments will fall, but there will always be museums, I hope, and there will always be people who go to art and music and theater for escape and for peace of mind and for sort of a touchstone to our own civilization. It gives so many kids a place to belong. And, to, and like I said earlier, to, to be in touch with a side that helps them think and, and be creative and be kind to others and, and feel the emotions that you don't get out of a textbook. And we have to have that in our lives. We have to be able to, to think about others and, and feel emotion. And I, sometimes I think we get so caught up in, you know, mathematical formulas and the periodic table and the Bill of Rights and all these wonderful things that people learn that are extremely important, but you have to have that side that you can, you can tap into people on an emotional level. I think that's why people love music and why they love art is, is because of how it makes us feel. The most important thing I think about any music or any art um, is the aesthetic reaction that we all have that feeling that you have when you're at a concert, that feeling that you have when you go to an art museum and how that makes you feel inside um, is the most important, it's the most important thing of it all.
To me, FFE is a second home. It's my home away from home. These group of kids are my kids that I work with every single day. They're my, um, my students and I value them as much as I would if I had my own, if I had my own children. Um, it's not just an extracurricular, it's like we say a family and we all care about each other and we all get along and it's, well some days we all get along, <laughs> but it's not just a group that you're a part of. You become just like I said a family. It's, it's a really neat experience. It's not only a show choir, not only a group. At Family High School, it's a family. You, Because you're around these people all the time. You want to see them grow. You want to see them flourish. You want to see them be as good or even better than you once were. And it's, it's nothing I can explain better than a family. FFE had a huge impact on who I became both as a musician and a performer, but also uh, who I have become as a person. And um, it was something that I knew that I wanted to be involved with as soon as I learned what it was. Um, and through my years in that group, I had so much wonderful instruction from so many great um, leaders, vocal directors, choreographers. So it's neat with both VIP and FFE to watch these students come through the program and experience the exact same things that I got to do and all the traditions and all the special moments um, from the final song on Cabaret to wearing the alumni sweatshirt to um, going to Spring Fling and, and watching the new kids come through the program. Uh, it's, it's really special. It's almost like I sort of get to relive my own experience through watching them. If I were to, to say what my fantasy world is, it's just a world of happiness where people are kind to one another because you don't see that anymore. And so I could care less about the castle and the fame and the fortune, but I just want to live in a world where we are kind and just love each other. FFE has meant so much and helped me through so much. Also, like my dad passing away, that was a hard time that went through and music was always something that brought me back to good memories. And having a mentor like Mr. Manley, being my father that I wish I still had, he was a gateway to happiness that I could get away from the hardships and just be with my friends and being surrounded by people who love what I love doing. And music is one of the greatest things in this world that can bring people together. Uh, my fantasy world is just being happy and having everyone around me be happy because that's when I'm the happiest. And when we actually started singing the ballad, uh, Mr. Manley asked us to think about our fantasy world and the first time I ever like cried when we sang the ballad was I closed my eyes and it was just all the people that I love and they were all like smiling and like laughing and it just like came right to me and that was super weird that I could see it so viv vividly but that I mean that's really just it that everyone around me is happy and loved and they can see themselves the way that I see them and that they see, see me in a way that is positive and that just like I don't know, just a world full of love and happiness because that's just how I feel all the time and I would like everyone to feel that way. My fantasy world is a place where everybody can just be who they want to be, how they want to be, and everybody will look at them and smile and let them be exactly that. That's it. I uh, learned a long time ago that it's better for me to write down uh, things that I would like to say. I, as you know, I get emotional. Um, I also, after I say things, I go home at night and I think, ah, I should have said this, I should have said that. Um, it gets, so I'll have a letter for you sometime over the next week when I get a chance to sit down and kind of collect my thoughts. Um, very proud of all of you. Uh, I want you to have a ball tonight. It's gonna be a great crowd. Um, there's, there's nothing like Saturday night at Cabaret, so. Enjoy it. Our Father, we thank you for bringing us together. It's been uh, an incredible year, capped off by this incredible week that we've all had together. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. We know you've been with us every step of the way. Pray that you all, that you help us all to enjoy this evening and everything that this group stands for. And 
this wonderful community that we're so blessed to uh, a sell out show tonight. Um, just so fortunate to be here in this situation and, and we owe it all to you. Pray that you help us all to perform to the best of our abilities and help us to perform not to win. In your name we pray. Amen. this way for over 30 years. It's called Go With a Song on Your Heart.
drive home safely. We'll see you next year in the first year of the year. Thank you.